Tonight, Verizon's tracking system that you can't turn off. Fitbit has three new trackers. And what's all the fuss over Apple Pay? Tech News Tonight is next. This is Twit. This is Tech News Tonight, episode 202 for Monday, October 27th, 2014. This episode is brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform that makes it fast and easy to create your own professional website or online portfolio. For a free two-week trial and 10% off, go to squarespace.com and use the offer code TECHNIGHT. Hello, everyone. Happy Monday. I'm Sarah Lane, and let's get right into the tech feed. Verizon Wireless, which sells cell phone service to about 123 million subscribers, has been inserting a string of about 50 letters and numbers and characters that it calls unique identifier headers into the web traffic of its customers and the websites they visit for the past two years, which, as you can imagine, goes against some privacy tools like do not track settings and private browsing sessions. Verizon spokeswoman Deborah Lewis says that there's no way to turn it off, but that the company doesn't use the UIDH to create customer profiles. And if you opt out of the company's relevant mobile advertising program, then Verizon and its partners won't be using it to create targeted ads. But since Verizon is broadcasting this identifier to every website, ad networks could start using it to build a profile of your activity without your consent. Wired quotes Jacob Hoffman Andrews, who is a technologist with the Electronic Frontier Foundation and critic of this practice, who says, quote, ISPs are trusted connectors of users and they shouldn't be modifying our traffic on its way to the internet. He calls this perma cookies because they can be read by any web server that you visit and use to build a profile of your internet habits. It looks like recent leaks of Fitbit's newest wearables were the real deal as the company has officially launched three new models. The Fitbit Charge, an accelerometer equipped band with an OLED display and seven days, seven good days of battery life on a full charge, of course, that'll be available in November as a successor to the Fitbit Force for $130. The Charge HR is basically the same, plus an optical heart rate monitor, five days of battery life if the Charge HR is monitoring heart rate continuously. That'll go for $150. And the Fitbit Surge, a fitness smartwatch with a capacitive touch LCD display, side buttons, built-in GPS, the ability to get caller ID and text messages from a connected phone. It's kind of the... It's the mother of the Fitbit wearables. The Surge is also water resistant and like the Charge HR, will continuously track heart rate. It won't be available until early 2015 though, but will cost $250. But look out Fitbit, you might be the market leader, but Lenovo apparently has its own SmartBand SWB100. Now I say apparently because the company hasn't officially announced anything, but the product did appear on Lenovo's website with an explainer the Lenovo Smart Band is for young people who take care of their personal health and are interested in new tech trend products. It'll also track steps, distance traveled, calories burned, heart rate, and keep tabs on your sleep habits. The Smart Band can also automatically unlock your PC when you bring the device near it. That is pretty cool. No word on price or availability. Again, it wasn't an official announcement, but it does look like it'll sync with both Android and iOS apps and come in orange or blue. Amazon announced a new HDMI streaming device today called the Fire TV Stick, which is now available for pre-order. Amazon is offering Prime members or people who sign up for Prime special pricing on the stick, $19 for two days. So we're into the first 48 hours after which it will retail for $39. Now, unlike Google's Chromecast, Amazon's Fire TV Stick doesn't require another device to use it. It comes with a remote and most of the functionality of the $99 Fire TV box. Users can also use a free Android app on their phone to search for content with their voice. And Amazon says an app for iOS is in the works as well. Non-gaming apps that are written for Fire TV will automatically work on the Fire TV Stick, which is also... Run, running on a, a version of Android. Amazon also confirmed support for HBO Go on the Fire TV before the end of December and the Fire TV stick getting HBO Go in 2015. Everybody wants the HBO Go app. It is the hot ticket. Twitter's third quarter earnings are in and here's the bad news first. The company's very important user growth rate seems to be slowing. Active users rose 23% to 284 million compared with 24% growth in the prior period. So that's 
kind of going the wrong way. Sales were up, though. In fact, they more than doubled to $361.3 million. But Twitter's third quarter net loss is also up to $175.5 million, or $0.29 cents a share, from $64.6 million, or $0.48 cents a year earlier. Mobile advertising was 85% of total ad revenue in the third quarter. And international revenue more than doubled to $121 million, making up 34% of total sales. All that said, Twitter shares fell as much as 12% in extended trading, although the company's stock has risen 59% from a low point back at the end of May, which may indicate that confidence in user growth is recovering. Good news if you're a Microsoft Office 365 subscriber. The company is removing your storage limits for OneDrive. Now, that's if you're an Office 365 home, personal, or university subscriber then you've got unlimited storage. It's pretty cool. Microsoft is currently rolling out its changes to every account in the next couple of months. And if you're already a subscriber, you can opt in to be upgraded early over at Microsoft's OneDrive preview site. Now, this clearly puts a lot of pressure on competitors like Google and Dropbox and others that offer online storage to offer their own unlimited storage tiers. Neither company, Google or Dropbox, has announced changes as of yet. However, Microsoft Dropbox, or <laughs> Dropbox did respond to Microsoft after Microsoft's initial one terabyte of OneDrive space, which it announced a few months ago. So, you know, let's see if Dropbox responds again. In other pricing news, on November 2nd, the Xbox One's starting price will be $350, which is $50 less than its current price, and will apply to System Plus game bundles as well. For example, the Connect Free Assassin's Creed or Sunset Overdrive bundle will cost $350. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare would run you $450. Microsoft says the lower prices will be available until at least January 3rd, and if enough units are sold, the price may remain in place throughout 2015. This price cut also puts the Xbox One under the PlayStation 4 in price for the very first time. Coming up, what is with all the selfies with bears, people? I have a bone to pick with you. And up next, I will talk with Seamus Byrne from CNET about why CVS and Rite Aid turned off Apple Pay in their stores and what this means for Apple Pay going forward. But first, let's thank Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of TN2. It's the all-in-one platform that makes it easy and fun to create your own professional website or online portfolio. I've been using Squarespace for years. I've had a ton of designs. And you know, i got a little secret. I really didn't put much work into it at all. That's because... Squarespace can start you off with a beautiful template. You can customize it to your heart's desire or not at all, but they look really nice right out of the gate. Even recently added a logo creator tool. So if you've ever wanted like the coolest logo for yourself or your, or your business or really for anything, it's something that you can create right within Squarespace and they look really, really nice. Squarespace is easy to use. If you ever run into issues or need some help, they have live chat and email support 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Somebody's always at the ready to help you out. And e-commerce functionality as well for all subscription plan levels. You can accept donations on your website. Let's say you're a nonprofit or you're raising money for, 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 for a, you know, a, a marathon. or there, there are a million reasons you might want to do that. That's all built in, which is nice. Plans start at just $8 a month. Includes a free domain name if you sign up for a year so you get it all in one. And then Squarespace has some neat apps too. The Metric app for iPhone and iPad allows you to check your site stats on the go. The Blog app is where you can actually make updates you can add images, change things around, monitor your comments, and hosting is included. That's the great thing about Squarespace. Not only do they make a nice website for you, but they make sure that it's staying up. It's accessible. Anybody can get to it. Squarespace does all the hosting so you don't have to. You can start a free two-week trial, no credit card required. Start right now and just build, build your website. Put something really nice together. When you decide to sign up for Squarespace, make sure to use the offer code TECHNIGHT. That's T-E-C-H-N-I-G-H-T. That's the offer code. And you'll get 10% off. And you also show your support for us. Thanks to Squarespace for their support of Tech News Tonight. A better web awaits you. And it starts with your new Squarespace website. Joining us now is Seamus Byrne, editor, uh, Australia and Asia over at CNET. Joining us from, uh, from, uh, from Sydney, Australia. How is Tuesday, wow. Seamus? Yeah, feeling pretty good so far, you know. Uh, can't complain. I never get tired of that stupid joke, you know, <laughs> that you're living in the future. But uh, anyway, thanks for joining us so much. I mentioned before the break that we were going to talk a little bit about, you know, what's kind of what's going on with Apple Pay. 
I hear mm. from everybody who's used it, wow, that's, it, that was so easy. Wow, it's so, it's so magic. Um, the World Series of baseball, obviously a you know, big deal for baseball lovers in the U.S., is running MasterCard ads that are pushing Apple Pay. You know, it seems like uh, Apple has put a lot of these partnerships uh, with big, you know, uh, banks and credit card companies, put a lot of effort into that. However, we're already seeing a little bit of backlash. CVS and Rite Aid are two uh, uh, drugstore pharmacies that are now blocking Apple Pay. So, you know, I know you're in Australia, so it, it's kind of nice to get almost a, you know, a different perspective. What's going on here? Yeah, I mean, it's funny from, from, over here, it, it seems weird that certain outlets or certain companies could even block something like this. You know, I mean, here we have such a uniform architecture for how uh, these sorts of payments would work. So, so, uh, but but here, I've, obviously, through this news, we see that uh, CVS and Rite Aid are part of, of a group of companies, uh, along with, of course, your biggest retailer, Walmart, uh, who are trying to get their own payment system going called Current C. Uh, which is part of their group called the Merchant Customer Exchange. Now, uh, that basic idea, though, is, you know, they're talking about a system that uses QR codes that you have to use lots of personal information to sign up for. Uh, it, it, it sounds like if their system had happened like six years ago, it would have been you know, amazing and wonderful, but but it didn't. And, and so now we have crossed this threshold where, uh, you know, where a system like Apple Pay is working so well that, they've decided they want to turn off their NFC. Now, I think everybody already knew that Walmart wasn't in. So so I guess no one was expecting that. But I think it looks even worse when people have said, oh, this works great in these stores too. And and then those stores turn around and say, actually, we're, we're not going to let you do that anymore. I, I understand why some of these retail chains would want to push their own proprietary uh, c competitor, basically, to Apple Pay. Besides you know, boycotting, uh, well, you know, and, and I roll my eyes when I say that, not because you shouldn't boycott things that you don't believe in, but, you know, as, as consumers, you know, we don't really have any say in how this works. Does it, does it uh, come down to a, a store like CVS seeing their sales numbers go down because people are inconvenienced? Do they really care? Are there enough people who are interested in Apple Pay to, to really make a dent? Yeah, I think not in the short term. You know, I, I think, I think the key here is just, you know, is making it so easy to pay uh, going to ultimately lead to people spending more money? You know, I think the big complaint and the reason they want to run their own currency system uh, is so that they can essentially not uh, stop paying that two or three percent surcharge for credit cards, all that sort of thing. So yeah, they want to keep all the money that that they can. Uh, but at the same time, if you make more money because the payment is so easy that people just go, oh, I. I don't have my wallet, you know, I've just been out on a run, but I've got my phone with me. Uh, if I know I can go into this store and tap pay, then, you know, then that's that question for me is, you know, how many percentage points of, uh, you know, of extra sales might somebody get because they're supporting this? And and ultimately, I think if, if you're going to have five or six different standards running, like all around the country, then then it, it does get hard. And ultimately, users will maybe just stick with using the piece of plastic in their pocket instead of, uh, opting into a smartphone system. Clearly, Google Wallet didn't kind of get this kind of rapid adoption um, because it wasn't as easy, whereas I think clearly that first reaction so far seems to be that, that Apple users are really wanting to use it. What is the NFC situation in Australia? Is it you know, a common way to make a payment? Uh, you know, Give us a little perspective on, on living in Australia, how, how, how either normal or silly this all sounds. Yeah, look, the way I've been thinking about it is I think you guys now have that smart solution that it's just in search of a uniform infrastructure that means you could use it everywhere. Um, here we have the uniform infrastructure already in place. We're just now waiting for the smart solutions to use it. So, I mean, every single store you go into here has a tap payment system. Uh, all credit cards, debit cards, sort of bank cards, everything here now has a chip on it. Uh, and as of July this year, we've shifted to a total uh, chip and pin system. You can't like you can't use a credit card and sign for something here in Australia anymore. You have to put in a pin code for that security level. But at the same time, the tap payment system has actually meant that uh, out of all the different stores and things, essentially every bank now supports the idea that if your payment is less than $100, you don't have to verify the payment at all. You literally just tap your card and go. 
uh, no security check required. So you know, we have a really great system across almost every store. I can only think of one place I go now and then that doesn't do a tap payment system, but like in taxis, in everything, it's supported. Um, so right now we have two of our banks support it on uh, on android phones and using essentially a sticker on on iphones so uh yeah so right now you can get essentially an nfc kind of dumb payment system you don't have to turn on the app at all um if your phone is enabled with it you can just sort of tap and go so that's two of our major banks here already run that themselves uh and basically you know we are just now hoping apple pay launches here so that uh, apple users can get that kind of built-in system as well you know, there was an article uh, in the information published earlier today that Apple's eyeing uh, new uses for NFC beyond iPhone payments. What would those plans be? Yes, yeah, so I think, uh, I mean, it's that area of then going into what other kinds of key card technologies, what are all the other things that we use a card to sort of tap things. And so in that sense, it means security systems. Uh, it means uh, transit systems for, you know, running around, you know, the, the easy way of using electronic payments um, for trains and buses. Um, and even just, I guess, business key card access. So they've been talking to a company called uh, HID Global uh, and uh, Cubic, a couple of companies that sort of run a lot of that sort of uh, key card technology. Uh, and, uh, you know, they'd, they'd be looking to integrate with those kinds of systems so that instead of having to have the physical card, uh, somebody's, you know, Apple uh, device could be, uh, you know, securely enabled for that. Again, this is something that technically any NFC system should be able to uh, to work with, but I guess I guess it's that secure element, the Touch ID, that that maybe means uh, more companies would be a little bit willing to open up, say, you know, office security systems um, to to using this kind of tech. Seamus Byrne is CNET's editor for Australia and Asia, joining us from Sydney, Australia, Tuesday morning or or Monday evening on my side. Thanks so much for joining us, Seamus, and let folks know where they can keep up with all your free work. Yep, uh, you can find me at uh, cnet.com and uh, on Twitter at Seamus. Thanks so much. And Seamus, uh, congratulations on that one name Twitter handle. Cheers. Highly coveted. <laughs> Thank you. All right, moving on. Finally, I want to ask you a question. And the question I want to ask you is, are you foolish? If so, you might be the kind of person who takes a selfie when you find yourself near a large bear and then you post that picture onto the internet. Turns out there are a lot of these people. In fact, the number of visitors attempting to take selfies with bears in the Lake Tahoe area has caused the U.S. Forest Service to issue a statement requesting that visitors do not do that and instead stay away from the bears. Lisa Heron, who is a public affairs officer for the Lake Tahoe Basin, tells Mashable that, quote, people have been rushing up to the bears to take selfies and videos with them and... A bear will come and whole mobs of people will charge up to them to take photos. Heron says people are even running across highways to take photos of bears on the side of the road. The Park Visitor Center closes at the end of October, and Heron says hopefully this will help quiet the situation down. But the Forest Service may close the area for public safety if the issue persists. Please don't be foolish and take selfies with the bears. Just thought that that would be common knowledge, but apparently not. And that is it for this edition of Tech News Tonight. You can subscribe to the show at twit.tv slash TN2. Please do subscribe if you if you like our stuff. You get it automatically. And write us at TN2 at twit.tv with any feedback, questions, and comments you might have for us. Don't miss our morning news program, our sister program, if you will, Tech News Today, which is tomorrow and every weekday at 10 a.m. Pacific, 1 p.m. Eastern. As for me, I'm Sarah Lane, and I will see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bandwidth for Tech News Tonight is brought to you by CashFly.com.